welcome to this edition of Canton Contact. I'm your host, Peg Stevens. My first guest is here today to give us a closer look at First Step, the Western and Downriver Wayne County Project on Sexual and Domestic Violence. Joining me now with this in-depth look is Community Response Survivor Advocate, Jill Popovich. Jill, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Pleasure Why, to be here. Well, thank you. Why don't you start by telling us what type of an agency First Step is? First Step um, is a comprehensive agency serving um, survivors of domestic violence, sexual abuse um, in Wayne County, mainly Western Wayne County. Um, our services are um, free um, to any survivors. Um, and we've been um, doing this since 1978. So we've been around for a very, very long time. And what sort of services do you provide? We provide a multitude of services, um, including a 24-hour helpline. We have counseling for um, children and adults um, who have been victimized by both sexual and domestic violence. We have um, emergency shelter, uh, transitional housing. Um, we have a link to uh, many community resources. We also have um, some uh, legal um, resources. Um, we have uh, a community awareness and education. And we also have a community response program which um, attends hospitals and police departments um, when a victim is um, injured as a result of a sexual or domestic violence incident. Um, we can send an advocate out to do some crisis intervention at that time. And I understand you now have a presence in the Canton community. Yes, we're very excited. We actually now have a physical presence um, in the Canton Police Department. So I have an office in the Canton Police Department where I can meet um, members of the community um, in a confidential setting. So although we don't work for the Canton Police Department, we've now a uh, very strong collaboration with the Canton Police Department. So it has allowed me to um, be able to meet with clients right in Canton and provide a gateway to some of our services um, serving Canton and the 34 other communities that we serve in Wayne County. And speaking of other communities, um, where do you currently operate? Um, oh, we operate uh, really anywhere pretty much in western Wayne County and the downriver communities. We have um, offices in Plymouth, in Wayne, in Lincoln Park. Um, we have, and those are our main counseling offices. Also, we have an office in Redford where we see uh, clients for counseling services, but we have community response advocates that work out of several police departments um, in Dearborn, in Inkster, in Taylor, in several of the courts, um, in Canton, of course. Uh, so we, we really reach many, many clients in the Western Wayne and Downriver communities. And what exactly does a, a community response a survivor advocate do? Really what we do is um, I would receive police reports um, from the cities that I serve, um, any domestic violence, sexual assault, and elder abuse police report, and we will reach out to those um, victims of those crimes and just let them know that we're there and available um, for any sort of counseling or advocacy. We may be able to provide some court advocacy um, to explain the court process. Um, it's a very scary time for victims. Um, so we're there to help um, meet them where they're at and help provide some education and some support along the way. And I understand that um, April is um, Sexual uh, Assault Awareness and Prevention Month. Yes, and that is a very big month for us. We actually um, are a partner uh, to several different events throughout Wayne County. We work closely with sev uh, several colleges and taking back the night events. Um, we are planning to have a community event in Canton. Um, so it is um, 
sexual assault is really um, not your typical, what people typically think of as sexual assault. It's not the, the stranger in the bushes, most sexual assault, 75% of it um, is usually done by someone that the victim knows. Um, one in four women by the age of 18 will be sexually assaulted in, um, by someone. So, um, and many, many women that um, are sexually assaulted are sexually assaulted by um, intimate partners, uh, almost 30%. So uh, it is a crime that is um, the most underreported violent crime in America. So we want to bring awareness and education um, to the, the issue of sexual assault and abuse. And I understand that this is not just a, a women's issue. Absolutely not. One in six uh, men will be sexually assaulted by the age of 18 also. And we also provide services for men it's not just women. Um, our agency also provides services and emergency shelter for males also. So it's not just a woman's issue, it's, uh, it's a community issue. Now I understand that you do have a fundraiser coming up. What, what can you tell us about that? Yes, we have one of our biggest fundraiser, uh, uh, fundraisers coming up. It's put on by the Zontas um, group of Farmington Hills and Carson's of Laurel Pl Park Place. It is on March 22nd. Um, it's the 21st annual Stepping Out in Style event. Um, it's from 6.30 to 9.30. The store will be closed. It's a private shopping event. Um, uh, people that buy tickets will um, receive 25% off on most items, 15% off on cosmetics. Um, they will have um, uh, designers there doing workshops. There'll be food from local restaurants there. Um, it's going to be a really fun event. Tickets are $25 at the door and $20 in advance. Oh, great. It, it sounds like it, it will be a, a fabulous event. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Now, we're almost out of time, but where can folks go to get help and get more information? Um, the, probably the easiest way um, to get help is to call our 24-hour helpline. You can do that by calling 734-722-722. Um, 6800. Remember, all our services are free. Um, people in Canton can certainly reach out to me. Um, they can give me a call at 734 713 0683. You can go on our website at www.firststep-mi.org. Um, or we also have a Facebook page. And remember, all our services are confidential. And I do understand that you also provide interpreters. We have interpreters that can um, interpret in any language, so it's accessible to anyone. Well, Jill, thank you so much for stopping by and for showing us how First Step is making a difference in our community. Thank you. It's my pleasure. We will be right back with more Canton Contact. Welcome back to Cat in Contact. My next guests are here to tell us about a very important Agent Orange Town Hall meeting that's being presented by the Vietnam Veterans of America, local Plymouth Canton Chapter 528. Here with all the details is Beth Mead from the Canton Community Foundation, along with Dick Waldecker, a member of the Vietnam Veterans of America's local chapter. Welcome both of you to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Beth, why don't you start by telling us where and when this special town hall meeting is taking place this year? It's going to be at the Northville High School Auditorium. It's Saturday, May the 9th, 
Uh, it's a free event for veterans, their families, uh, children of veterans. It's important that they be there to see um, how this has affected people generations, you know, going forward. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. what time is it scheduled to take uh, place? It opens at 7 o'clock. The doors open at 7, but the program starts at 8, and it should wrap up around 2 o'clock. Ah, so eight in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, and it's, a, it's a long day, but it, there's a lot of speakers and it's important that people be there. There's oh. a good question and answer session also. Oh, so, great. Yeah. Well, um, walk us through the program. Who are some of the featured speakers? Uh, there is um, Congressman Trott will be there. Uh, Senator Colbeck will be there to talk about um, the federal part of it, correct? Federal state? and state benefits. Right. Uh, Trude Bennett is our main speaker. She's, uh, she's a physician, a retired physician, who's got a lot of history on what's happened to not only the veterans, but the generations going forward. Um, then we've got some other people who are veterans themselves, Moki Porter, Bob Cummings. We've got a child of a Vietnam veteran who's had effects of Agent Orange, so it should be a good program. Oh, it sounds like there's gonna be a lot of great information. A lot going on. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. why, as one of the sponsors, the, community, uh, mm -hmm. the Canton Community Foundation, why is it important to host this type of an event? Uh, one of the this is one of the things that we really support is veterans because we do our own veteran summit So we know the importance of this going forward and there's so many veterans in this area It's amazing how many there are just in the, the Detroit metropolitan area and You know if you go beyond that the scope is just amazing So it's important that we support this group of people who have done so much for us. Oh, absolutely And agent orange is, is a very serious topic exactly. uh, Dick why don't you tell us some of the history of agent orange? Uh, well, let's back up a little bit here historically, if we may. The formula to make this was actually discovered during World War II. After World War II, it was used as lawn spray and herbicides in farming to kill weeds, things of that nature. In the 1950s, uh, the British military in the guerrilla war in Malaysia used it to defoliate so the enemies they were fighting didn't have a place to have hide out, okay? So uh, that was its, its primary intent? So yeah, it, it would change the you landscape, and then so, so the enemy... See. Yeah, ah. you could see We're the dealing enemy. with triple canopy jungle. You have to take away the enemy's ability to hide. But That's they didn't realize that when they were killing off all of the foliage, it was affecting the people. Yeah, we'll get into that. Okay, and uh, so the British used it, then uh, President Eisenhower left office in January of 1961, there were approximately 800 military advisors in Vietnam. President Kennedy came along. He designed a thing called flexible response where we could use the military plus technology to go after containment of communism. That was a thought process back in the early 60s, containing communism. And they focused on Vietnam. Uh, he authorized very limited use of different agents like white, blue, and other colors. The agent gets its name from the barrel. There's a stripe on it for the color. That's where the name comes from on the barrel. So Agent Orange had an orange stripe. Orange stripe. Right, yeah. And so this is a very limited spraying that's going on in Vietnam to defoliate and destroy crops the enemy was living on for, you know, for, for their food. Uh, people didn't ask the question, what is this doing to the Vietnamese? And what is it doing to the American soldier? Mm -hmm. Now we have to, this is called Operation Ranch Hand. It started in January of 1962 on a very limited chemical spraying basis, mostly around Saigon. Uh, then we have to skip forward to March of 1965 when we get Operation Ranch Hand, goes from a few hundred thousand gallons sprayed in four years time, three years, and suddenly, in the next four years, it's going to have 20 million gallons sprayed. Wow. We're talking the area spray more than once the state of Massachusetts in size. And this is how much spraying went on, okay? Same month, March of 65, was Operation Rolling Thunder, all-out bombing of North Vietnam. Same month, March of 65, was when the first Marine combat troops arrived in Vietnam, okay? Now, let me put this in perspective. March of 1965, all these chemical companies making this material for the spraying were invited to Dow Chemical in Midland, Michigan for a meeting about the manufacturing, handling of it, and the impact it was having on their employees. They were starting to show some health issues. 
okay? Uh, from the result of that meeting, no information was passed along to the government of the military. But they knew Amazing. Agent Orange, the way it was being made, it's two different chemicals. I'm not going to get into that detail. Also, it goes to a third. It, uh, the way you fast process it and heat it, you make what they call a dioxin. This is a poison. And We're, then when it's exposed to, or it comes in contact right. with right. humans, yeah. has all these ramifications. Yeah. Exactly. At the same time, the farmers in this country were using something that's similar in weed control on their farms, for instance, or the lawn service companies. But they, they were told how to protect themselves from exposure, how to uh, handle the containers that came in, et cetera. Now, when you're talking exposure, you're talking um, inhaling it, mm -hmm. uh, getting it on your skin. Mm -hmm. Right. Also wearing swallowing it. Yeah, wearing a face mask and how to, how to dispose of these containers that came in. Let's talk about some of the health problems that um, uh, have been documented. Uh, here. Oh, I didn't pull it out. Uh, there's 14 recognized diseases right now the VA pays for with respect to Agent Orange. Uh, diabetes number two is the, probably the most prominent. Prostate cancer is a number. Another one. I say there's a total of 14. But uh, the, the list keeps changing because they find more stuff related to Agent Orange. Uh, as Beth had said, this is a generational thing. Now last Wednesday, Professor Martini, who wrote the book Agent Orange, he calls it our last ghost of the Vietnam War because uh, it's still ongoing. We were at the Grand Rapids Veterans Home, which has 450 people living there, 244 of which are Vietnam veterans. Uh, this was very impromptu, very quickly put together in a few days, and he agreed to come, and him and I were going to speak on the subject. We had approximately 80-some veterans. Many of them came in in wheelchairs and with various medical equipment attached to them because of their illnesses. And these were effects from the exposure to Agent, Agent Orange. Orange. Yes. Now, at the town hall meeting, um, will he be discussing uh, where veterans can get more information or yeah. find yeah. out about the benefits um, that we are available? Will, we will have veteran service officers. They're called VSOs, so people can work with them. Uh, if you haven't applied for Vietnam, Vietnam benefits. benefits, okay, or veterans benefits. Uh, but what I was going to say on this Grand Rapids event, uh, I got to go one on one with some of the people there. Met one young lady, 40 years old. She showed me the scar on her throat from cancer surgery. She had just buried her father, a Vietnam veteran. And here she's another generation. Right, the next generation mm -hmm. affected. Uh, the Ford Foundation and the Apps. Aspen Institute, oh, about 15 years ago, started a study, effects of Agent Orange. They went to Vietnam, investigated everywhere it was sprayed, all the hot spots, um, things of that nature, and they estimate this is going to go through seven generations of people before it ends. That is staggering. We're almost out of time, but if you wouldn't mind recapping where and when uh, this event is taking place, because we do, we want all the, sure. the family yeah. members uh, who are affected to make sure that right. they come and get the most up-to-date information. This has been a series of town halls also that the 528 has. So last year it was kind of an introduction to Agent Orange. This one is concentrating on the children of veterans and the, the next generation. So it's Saturday, May the 9th at the Northville High School Auditorium. Registration is not required, but we do prefer it. Um, you can go on to the uh, Vietnam Veterans of America website to find more details. Uh, registration opens at 7 and the program starts at 8. And as Dick said, there'll be VSO officers there, so bring your information with you. You can sit down with them one-on-one, -on -one, which is a great opportunity. You don't get stuck in that phone, you know, back and forth. So it's a great opportunity for you to actually sit down and talk to people and get your questions answered. Oh. Very important that the family members come. Don't think that, you know, oh, that was my dad or my grandpa. You still need to come. Absolutely. And uh, Dick, that website to go to, and why should folks come to this v town hall v meeting? VVA528.org. You'll open it up and you'll see a symbol just like it shows on here, Agent Orange, right on there. Okay, great. Well, thank yeah. you both so much for thank stopping you. by with all this great information. Thank you. We will be right back with more Cat and Cat.
Welcome back to Cat in Contact. My next guests are here to tell us about some classes and services that are available at the Summit on the Park that will help us meet our fitness goals. Joining me now is Christy Zembrowski, the Health and Wellness Program Coordinator, along with personal trainer Tom Arbaugh. Thank you two for joining us today. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. I understand that the Summit is offering some drop-in opportunities for certain classes. What can you tell us about that? So we now have drop-in spots open for both our Cardio Cycle Express class as well as our Vinyasa Yoga class. This is a great opportunity if you've never tried cycling or yoga before. Um, you can come in and try it once before having to commit to the entire session. Oh, great. Sounds like a, a neat opportunity. Mm -hmm. And how would you describe those two classes? Okay, so Cardio Cycle Express, it's a 45-minute class, and it's a great um, cardio, gets the heart rate going, it's very fun and upbeat. And then the Vinyasa Flow Yoga is led by the instructor. She'll um, tell you a flow, lead you through the first time, and then she'll allow you to repeat that flow at your own pace three or four times before moving on to the next sequence. Oh, wonderful. And if someone was interested in dropping in, what's the process? You could either do so at the front desk at Summit on the Park, or you could go to cantonfun.org and search for the activity and then um, the drop-in activity for that specific day. Excellent. And it does sound like a, a great opportunity to try test drive something mm -hmm. before you commit to it. Yes. Now, I understand that you have another um, healthy cooking class. Yes. What can you um, tell us about that? It's called Clean Cooking and Clean Eating, and it will just give you an overview of how you can maybe change some of your cooking techniques at home, eliminating some of the processed things and, you know, incorporating more fresh natural ingredients that will help supplement your um, workout routines. Excellent. And when is that being offered? That is on the 23rd of April, which is a Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Oh, great. And if folks wanted to register for that, how would they go about that? They could also look that up at uh, cantonfund.org. Excellent. Well, talking about uh, clean eating, <laughs> it transitions into healthy living. <laughs> Tom, I understand that you have a very popular personal training program. What can you tell us about it? Well, uh, yes. Uh, over the years, uh, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of people in the community, uh, wide age ranges. I uh, get some high schoolers, uh, even you know kids starting out uh, where their parents want them to learn the proper way to use equipment and strength train with the right technique. Um, athletes, you know, training for a specific, specific sport. Um, certainly a lot of everyday people that just want to work on their general health, weight loss, getting stronger, overall conditioning, and certainly a wide age range with the adult population. Uh, people that are, you know, uh, busy life with kids and, and, and working all the time, and then people that are retired and, and seniors, you know, working on things that are important for them. So, so yeah, over the years, uh, it's definitely uh, grown into something where I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different people from different segments. So, oh, yeah. great. Now, in terms of getting results, um, w would you say that your services are for people who are already actively training, or uh, are you welcoming uh, beginners as well? Oh, definitely both. Uh, I, I really, really feel that my most important job initially is those that really are intimidated to work out in, the, in a, especially a fitness center setting, um, and really need to learn a good routine to do. Um, and build that confidence that they can go and make it a regular part of their lifestyle. Um, that, that's a big part of, of what I do with people. Um, and then correct, uh, people that are already active and working out on a regular basis that need an extra challenge, motivation, maybe some fine tuning to their routine, something that you know, uh, will, will help keep it interesting for them. Um, and, and that's a big part of uh, what I do as well. So it's fun, fun to work with all types. I bet. <laughs> now, uh, why is it important this time of year to, to focus on personal training services? Um, it's a great idea this time of year, especially as people, uh, especially with the weather this week we've been having, to get more involved recreationally with outdoor activities, whether it be you know, jogging, bicycling, you know, uh, walking more regularly, golf, tennis, to, to really start in the weight room and, and, and work on your strength and stability your balance, uh, your core strength with a lot of the different movement patterns. Um, so the weight room and, and working out on, on that conditioning is a, is a great place to build that foundation. Oh, I believe it. Um, if folks wanted to sign up, or how do they go about um, becoming uh, you know, uh, a person who takes advantage of your services? Well, they have a couple different ways to do that. Uh, one, and, and probably the easiest these days, is to get on the, the website, uh, which is the www.summitonthepark.org and they can find out a, a pretty good amount of information, the prices, rates, 
Um, the other way certainly is to call someone on the park and uh, speak directly with me or, or, or with someone that can give me their information that I can talk more in detail about their personal interest and you know, what they're looking for. And why is it important to, to have instruction in terms of utilizing the fitness equipment? Uh, I think, to be honest, a lot of people, uh, if they don't have an organized workout routine, they feel like they're not sure they're getting the most efficient use of their time. We're all busy. Uh, we want to go in there, have a pretty good game plan, be able to get it done in you know under an hour or, 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 or maybe slightly more, but, but feel like you are accomplishing the most you can in the time that you have. So that's something I could certainly like helping people with so they don't feel like they're wasting their time uh, in, the, in the weight room. Oh, great. Well, thank you both so much for stopping by today, and uh, we'd love to have you come back and, and um, motivate us more for summer. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's going to do it for this edition of Canton Contact. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next.